John, welcome to the show. Mr. Sultani, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for having the show. Me. Appointment secretary. What is an appointment secretary to the governor of California? The governor gets, uh, makes about 2,500 appointments. These are people who run his agencies and his departments, as well as people who work for him uh, closely. And it's my job to uh, help to identify those people, interview them, and ultimately make recommendations to the governor as to who he should appoint to these positions. It is a significant number of appointees. What is that number? Some like over 2,000? Over, over 2,000, uh, about 2,200 uh, appointees to boards and commissions throughout the state and another 850 who are full-time employees of the state who run, basically manage uh, state operations. Excellent. Well, we appreciate, this is holidays by the way, <laughs> and, and uh, we appreciate you being here and we understand in about three or four days the governor will be leaving the office and you're also moving on. I am. But this gives us an opportunity from you as a state's person here. I don't know anything about state's politics, but hopefully you, you will help us understand what's going on. The biggest problem, the challenge that we face in the United States as a whole is a deficit. Right. And obviously California has its own share of the problem. Before we get started, I'd like to show a couple of slides and let's see how important California is actually not only to the United States, but the world. And I want to, if you can show the slides here, I can talk about the California. If you can see, uh, California is ranked number eight in terms of how big our economy is. Now, we're not a sovereign state here in California, we're the state. But if you look at United States, 14 trillion, and you look at the down list, Japan, China, Germany, France, UK, Italy, and there you go. After Italy, you have California with $1.9 trillion. That is a huge economy. Now, any challenges that we face in California, it's not just an issue that for people that are in California or United States. It has global impact. That's why I want to go to the next slide here, and I want to probably ask our good friend, Mr. Cruz, Governor of California, when he was, actually when he stepped in the office uh, after Mr. Davis, but in the election year of 2003, here's what he said. I want to read this. It says, every government, every government proposes moving boxes around to reorganize government. I don't want to move the boxes around. I want to blow them up, okay? So, governor came was in the office with the intention of, making a huge change, shifting the boxes around, fixing a deficit that we had at the time. So, the question is this, John. Now the governor is going out, and we still have a $28 billion deficit. Why can't we fix a deficit? Uh, there are a couple of reasons. One is that much of our spending is already fixed in the Constitution. About 70, over 70 percent of our budget is actually required to be paid by the state of California. I'm talking about things like education, mm. Medicare or uh, Medi-Cal, um, corrections for uh, housing our criminals. Those take, take the vast majority of, of our revenues. As a result, when we have a dip in revenue, as we have had in the last couple of years, that leaves very little room to maneuver to maintain other programs since already so much of that money is spoken for. Right. Um, and so what we have is a situation where what the legislature has done basically is patchwork uh, and uh, borrowing from next year's revenues, uh, fixing, doing some accounting gimmicks, uh, essentially, and ignoring the structural problem which we have, which is that we rely too much on uh, state income taxes to balance our books instead of looking to other sources of revenue, maybe at the uh, cost of reducing some of our reliance on state income taxes. So it appears that are we always optimistic when we forecast our revenue more than we're which should be, because I was reading some stats, it came out of actually, it came out of a UCLA discussion at the mm -hmm. forum with Governor Brown, and it was stated that the past 20 years, Republicans, Democrats, doesn't matter. Everybody that came here as a, as a governor, 85% of the time, the projections were wrong, more optimistic. Why is, why is it so optimistic? Uh, uh, primarily because most elected officials don't want to tell the populace what they really need to hear, and that is the truth. And so what we have is a situation where uh, elected officials 
in order to maintain their status as an elected official, basically lead people to believe that the revenues, uh, although revenues are down this year, they'll be up next year. Mm. Uh, one good example of that just in this last budget was the fact that they contained about a $5 billion donation from the federal government. Mm. Well, it never came and it's not coming. Mm. That's the sort of rosy scenario that uh, the legislature has, has painted for the electorate in order to push the budget problem from one year to the next, mm -hmm. hoping at some point that the economy will grow so fast that it will overcome whatever their deficiencies are in terms of projecting revenues. The second part of the discussion is, is the expenditure. Mm -hmm. right, so revenue, and then you got the expenditure. Right. Astonishingly, I learned last week that for every prisoner that we have in California, some close to $49,000 a year, almost $50,000 a year, we are paying from our taxes to keep people in prison. Mm -hmm. Where as opposed to, for example, I think it was Utah, is some number is like $20,000. some thousand dollar. How do we deal, with, this is the budget item, I mean, how do we, why do we have to pay $50,000 for, for criminals? Well, one, one of the things this exemplifies, is in, this, in a matter of speaking, is the stranglehold that's, that employee unions sometimes have on state office holders. Uh, in this case, we have the Correctional uh, Peace Officers mm -hmm. Association. Um, they are paid pretty handsomely, not that they don't work in uh, dangerous circumstances, et cetera, being in, in prison, but the fact of the matter is that they're paid more than uh, prison officials in Utah or uh, in other countries and uh, as a consequence and they have a lot of overtime uh, uh, because they keep their numbers low and so uh, we are simply captive in a matter of speaking to some of these employee unions and in my view they're going to have to give up something in years to come or perhaps find themselves without a pension um, because much of our unfunded obligations on the state level deal with pension liabilities which really aren't even on the books mm. Uh, it's, an, it's an amazing scenario to think that the, the state of California, California taxpayers, collectively, cities, counties, all of the other uh, uh, municipalities, they collectively owe $500 billion mm -hmm. in unfunded pension liabilities. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, you have to pay the piper. You have to pay the piper. And I, I don't know when we'll get to that point, but when we do, there'll be two ways to, to, to fund it. That'll either be to raise taxes or to cut services, or some combination of the two. All right. So. To put things in perspective, okay, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger is not the only governor that came in there with a promise and quite frankly couldn't fix it. I'm showing here on a slide Jerry Brown on a December 20th at UCLA basically, and I'm not, I'm, uh, this is not, I'm not paraphrasing this by the way, on a forum he says the day of reckoning is here. We must bite the bullet. All right. So what he said, he said, I'm going to, a tough talk, just like, Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Governor Schwarzenegger. He says, I'm going to cut 20% from my office budget to start with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut education, health care. i got to cut everything. All right. So that's the part about the expenditure, mm -hmm. right? Is he going to do it? Um, I think he's going to make an effort to do it. Um, I think at the same time, however, in order to induce the legislature uh, to, to make the cuts that he's uh, suggesting, that he'll have to also offer a carrot, and that carrot will be a raise in taxes, although it will be disguised in the form of the fact that we will, not, uh, rev we will continue to have the tax increase that's supposed to expire in July. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll continue to maintain that beyond July as a way of keeping our revenue stream strong. That would cost the state probably $5 billion more or less if that tax uh, increase were to be rescinded. Mm -hmm. uh, the people of California voted two years ago that it would be a two-year temporary tax increase. I think he's going to go back to the voters and ask them to extend that. Extend that. Um, for how long, I don't know, but I think that's the only way he's going to be able to induce the, the legislature to go along with some of the cuts that he proposes. proposes. Because don't forget, it is the legislature mm -hmm. that proposes the budget that passes the budget, right. I suppose. Uh, the governor proposes it, the, governor, the legislature then does its, uh, amends it, right. modifies it, they pass it, it goes back to the governor, he can blue pencil it, he can line item veto, but essentially the nuts and bolts of it are crafted by the legislature. And so they're the ones who are going to have to bite the bullet. It's going to be very tough in this environment without being too partisan. We have a Democrat-controlled legislature uh, who has been supported by labor in this state and it's labor who's going to be asked to take 
the cut here because we're going to have to reduce services to a certain degree. That's the teachers, that's the firemen, that's the um, nurses, uh, and the correctional officers. And it's unfortunate, and I would just hope that when they make these cuts, they do it in a responsible way and not do it in a way which punishes the taxpayers to yes. say, here we, show, you know, here, we told you so, yeah. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah.